Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anang Shalamyan and in today's video, I have with me a very, very special and very talented writer. Her name is Eva Kaifenheim and she is from Germany. She is doing some amazing work on Medium recently and one of her recent articles went viral. platform and i'm so happy to welcome eva to today's in today's chat session hi hi <laughs> so happy you agreed to do this with us okay so eva uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, medium journey like how did you discover the platform and when did you start writing on the platform mm -hmm. sure so um I First of all, thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here and I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, I discovered Medium in March uh, when I stumbled upon a Facebook post from a former school colleague of mine, uh, Sinem Günel. We studied together in Vienna and she's a very popular writer on Medium. I think she has more than 20,000 followers and I uh, discovered that she was hosting a webinar on, um, on Medium. So I joined and that's also the day I began writing. It was end of March 2020, so half a year ago. And then I, I went all in. Since then, I've been writing almost every day. And uh, I've taken her course, more on that later, I guess. And um, yeah, it's been like a roller coaster journey. Like every writer will know that in some parts it's, it's pretty hard and on others it's very rewarding. But I've, uh, enjoy, I enjoy writing on Medium so much that I but I'm very grateful for having this current platform in March. That's really amazing. I thought you'd been on the platform for longer. I didn't know it's only been seven or eight months. <laughs> yes, yes, so yes. Like, uh, <laughs> right? So uh, just now you mentioned that you took Sinem, uh, Sinem's course, right? So that I wanted to ask you about courses only, like uh, what were the, like ha how, how helpful were the courses? And would you suggest a beginner on Medium that they should take some Medium related course? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. So I think like with everything, you can learn it by yourself. You, you don't need the courses necessarily. But if you have a restricted amount of time and you have money available for investing, it's always uh, improving your learning curve. Yeah, you, you get the content which is curated before and you can follow a path and it's a very well structured way to learn. So I am really grateful for Steenem's course and I also booked uh, some coaching uh, sessions with her because it helped me figure out what should I focus on first and then have like a, a, a well-educated opinion on how I should proceed. And I guess that also helped me um, be quite successful in the beginning of my journey. And so if you, if you ask, should, do you really need a course to be successful on Medium? No, I don't think so. I think you can figure out the stuff on your own and do the research and read the articles and you will find out. If you, however, have a limited amount of time and want to learn fast, it's a great investment to make. And I can recommend CNM's course, but I guess there are also great other courses out there, like Niklas Kuk is one, or uh, Tim Denning just released a course, or Tom Kugler. So there's a big, big, big opportunity and uh, just find out what you prefer, yeah. Right, I think that's very true. I mean, obviously you can figure it out on your own, but a course will help to make the process really quick and really simple, right? It would yeah. lay out a step-by-step -step process on how you can go about it. Yeah. Did, did you take a course? I'm curious. Oh, no, I did not take a course. Because uh, when I started out, I just happened to get lucky because one of my articles got, like, it made $100. And I was so lucky. So I wrote articles that were structured similarly or published in the similar plat uh, publications. And that actually helped. And I found out about the courses much later. And I always considered, should I take a course? And I, I still am uh, you know, debating this question because I am sure that the course would definitely help. But then again, Medium has recently undergone a lot of changes. So maybe, you know, I'll just wait for a few more days and then maybe I'll take something else in the future. Yeah, 
that sounds very reasonable. And just as you mentioned it, there are also great books um, on, on writing on Medium. For example, Nicholas Cole, uh, Online mm -hmm. Writing. It's like, I think the best book and the best $20 investment that's out there because it not only helps you find the right style, but also describes how to use Medium, how to use the data. And it's also really, really helpful. So yeah. And you're the best example that you can be quite successful on Medium without taking a course. So that's also possible. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I recently read Nicholas Cole's book. It was, I, I wouldn't lie, it was actually life changing because the tips he mentioned were so, so effective. And not just about writing online, but about, you know, structuring your articles, about picking headlines. It was very helpful. I still haven't finished reading because I'm taking my time highlighting and making notes, but it's definitely a great resource and it's uh, obviously it's not as expensive as a course. So it's a great investment for a beginner. Yes, definitely. <laughs> right. So uh, I, I'm just curious, how long were you writing? Uh, like before you discovered Medium, did you have a writing? Did you write before or did you have a blog or any place did you write? The short answer, no. I, I started getting serious about writing in March. The longer answer, yes, because I've been keeping my journal for like 10 years. I've been writing some guest blog posts for a startup that I founded or for some uh, university blog. So I always enjoyed writing, but I've never had a daily process of writing and I've also never tried to get better at it. So I, I did some, I would say hobby writing before, but uh, no, like full time writing it's since March. Oh, that's really amazing because in so so less time you have like you are such a great writer right now. Your posts are so well structured. It's it's really amazing how far you have come in just a few months. So uh, one more question <laughs> is that <laughs> yeah, if you take an article that you wrote in March or say April and you compare it with something that you wrote yesterday or a few days back. What do you think would be the major differences? Or if I rephrase the question, how do you think you have evolved as a writer because of Medium? That's a great question. I have to think about that one. So I feel the answer is uh, threefold. First of all, I, I feel my writing style changed to a more reader-centric approach. Like if you take one of my first articles from the beginning, it felt like a journal entry, like I was pouring my heart out, but it wasn't with the reader in mind. So that one has changed. I always think about how can my experience benefit the one that's that's uh, reading and spending his time or her time on my articles. The second one is, like you mentioned, structure. It's so important to deliver your ideas in a well-structured manner so that the, the reader really gets what you're trying to say so I learned a lot about grammar, about style, about how to use um, proper formatting, how to structure paragraphs, how to write um, captivating introductions, how to uh, finish your piece with a strong conclusion. So all this structure thing is the second one. And the third uh, thing that's changed is discovering, and that's also what Nicholas Cole describes in his book, discovering your topics. And that doesn't have to be one single niche, but I, I discovered I really enjoy writing about education, about personal finance and learning growth topics. While in the beginning, I thought, oh, I'll write about nutrition and health and about my relationship. But no, not at all. I don't enjoy it. It's not good. <laughs> and and I, I, I figured in those six months what I really enjoy. So, yeah, to, to sum up, first of all, it's more reader centric. Second, it's better structured. And third the topics are more in line with my personal interests. Mm -hmm. You know, I can totally relate with all the three points that you mentioned because my initial post, if I look back, they completely look like diary entries. There is no takeaway for the reader and it's just rambling on and on. If I, if I can actually, you know, improve those posts now if, from what I have learned over time, I can improve them now and it actually, you know, makes a lot of difference. And similarly, like you said, that I thought initially when I joined Medium, I thought maybe because I love writing fiction and I thought I would write fiction and poetry, but then uh, I saw which topics 
work, which topics I wrote work. And mostly when I write articles about books or book recommendations, they do really well. And so <laughs> I've stopped writing fiction. I don't remember when I last wrote fiction on media. And I've been mostly writing about personal development or books. And it's been it's been a great journey. I never thought I would be doing that before media. <laughs> That's interesting, yes. <laughs> Right. So, uh, how, how what does your writing process look like? Like when you write an article, what are the stages it goes through before you submit it? It changed a lot. So my current answer only reflects the current part I'm in. If you'd asked me in April, I would have said, "Oh my God, it takes me like 15 hours for one article, and it's such a up and down." But now I figured what's what 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 works best for me, and it's. <laughs> it's very <laughs> structured. So how does it work? I First of all, everything I read or con consume, I'll capture it in Notion, which is like a project management platform. And there in Notion, there's like my, it's like a resonance calendar, everything I find interesting or inspiring. And every time a, an idea strikes me, I write that down in my board. So like many writers have Trello boards, I have the one in Notion. And there are like 500 ideas right now that are ready to write with some quotes in it or some um, thoughts or some uh, small sentences. And so when I start, I never start with a blank page. I already have this massive idea board um, where I can look to. And the most time is for me deciding which idea will go next because there's so much which could be written. But when I decide it, and I write every morning from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., so when I, at 7 a.m., open the blank page and I select an idea, I'll start with the headline, which is, as you also know, really important. So I use co-schedule. I, I do like 10, 20, 30 attempts until I have the right headline. And then from there, I start writing. So I think about the overall structure. If it's a listicle, I'll come up with the subheadlines. If it's the more story building piece, I'll start with the intro and some like um, paragraphs. And then like the next two hours are solely writing. I try to, like Itchy um, mentioned this um, writer she uses. I use like a program called Cold Turkey. So everything is blacked out and you just can write. And I really try to get into that flow state. It's, doesn't work always but sometimes it's like a really nice feeling to produce the content and then after two hours i put that piece away it's like done for the day and in my in my third hour of writing from 9 to 10 a.m i take the piece from yesterday or the days before and do the editing and here i set myself the very hard deadline of uh, 60 minutes and in those 60 minutes i'll have to finish editing that means um tweaking the headlines, looking for grammar mistakes, um, using Grammarly to, to go through the, uh, to the overall structure. And when my timer says, okay, 60 minutes is over, I need to push the publish button. And that, that's pretty tough. Like I, I, it's self-imposed stress, but it also makes me not perfectionizing because as you also know, because um, you also publish a lot, like every new post is like, a piece that's out there and you can focus on the next one. And the longer it takes to perfectionize one post, the less you will write. And I lose motivation if a piece lingers around for like three, four, five days. So I try to be quick and done is better than perfect. <laughs> that's so true because if you wait, if you work on a piece for a long time, you're never going to, it's never going to be perfect enough for you to yeah. publish it. Right? Yeah. I think- But, but I have so much- also, yeah. Sorry, I have so much no. respect for, for you because you published with Better Humans, which is like a very detailed, oriented, long form story uh, form. So you really put in many edits and a lot of focus. So that's something I'm still working on and I haven't managed yet to publish with them because I, I always lose patience. So that's something I can really learn from you where you inspire me a lot. Thanks for that. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Actually, 
I you I also like do the same thing. I write one post a day, but a better humans post takes a long time. It takes like five, four, five days for a complete post, and then I send it to the mastermind group because I don't ever want to, you know, pitch a post to better humans without getting edits, edit suggestions from you people. And yeah, some posts take a long time, but some posts don't take such long. It depends on uh, the uh, content and the. Uh, Whatever, how much research I have to do for it. Mm -hmm. So can, uh, can you, you publish, yeah. Can you estimate how long it takes you for a better humans post? I'm curious. Approximately okay, in so, hours. Oh, in hours. That's a difficult question because okay, if I if I work on it for two hours every day, then maybe it takes eight to ten hours. Mm -hmm. It's That's it's good. it's a lot, but then again, <laughs> yeah. Because it's a commission piece, right? So you, it has to be of that level to for you to receive that commission. So mm -hmm. definitely take ten hours, maybe maybe longer. I am not hundred percent sure about. It. <laughs> and uh, as you said about uh, you know not waiting for it to be perfect, uh, Nicholas Cole puts a word to it. He calls it practicing in public. So you know when you put your imperfect pieces out there and people comment, so you can get valuable feedback how you can improve. That also definitely helps a lot, right? Right. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, so, what are your favorite topics uh, to write about on Medium? And do you do you like writing about some? Did you like before? Like you already mentioned that you thought you write about food, but before you joined Medium, did you like writing about something else? And after joining Medium, did you consciously stick to a selected few topics? Mm -hmm. So, like I said before, it was rather limited to journaling and some startup entrepreneurship articles because I founded a company and I wrote about it. It was only natural. But when I joined Medium, I, um, I thought about which topics do I want to learn and which topics do I have to say a lot about. And it came down to education, which is like my passion. And I'm, I worked as a teacher for two years. So that's also where I have a lot of on-field experience. And still read a lot of books about it. And then the, the second um, topic is um, personal finance, because I'm really interested in it. I read a lot of um, books about it. I optimize my portfolio and I feel there's it's so simple. And there are so many people who push that topic away because they feel it's difficult, but it isn't. And I just want to make it more accessible. Uh, without being the perfect uh, financial advisor, I'm not, but, but spreading the like the initial content pieces to dig deeper and dare to look at it. And the third uh, topic I write a lot about, apart from education and finance, is uh, learning strategies and reading. So how can you really make the most out of your books and how, out of the time you learn? And how can you systemize your progress? And so that's uh, something I'm personally very interested in. And I feel there's a broad audience for it who also love to, to take place. Yeah. In the journey. Definitely. I have read a lot of your articles about education and learning processes, but I haven't read your pieces about personal finance, but I'll have to check them out because it's a topic I am also, you know, struggling to educate myself on. And definitely your pieces would definitely help. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the, the, the good thing is about the, the content question, like every time you write about a topic, you get better at writing about it. So if I now start a piece on education, I already have like formulated hundreds of ideas and I can come back to that bucket and improve it and like work on those ideas and it will become better and better and also more informed because the deeper you dip, the more you will learn about it. Absolutely. But do you think that there are some topics that work well on Medium and some topics don't really work well? Mm -hmm. That's what my coach Sinem told me in the beginning. She said like, Non-fiction works better than fiction. And also everything around mm, technology, like trends works well, everything around personal development. I feel also money works really well. And then there's obviously the hands-on relationship advice, like with PS, I love you, or um, other love-related publications. So I feel you can unless it's a very small audience and that's also what nicholas cole writes in his book you can you can basically make any topic interesting 
So yeah, I feel yes. that most <laughs> most of the things work when they are reader centric. Of course, if you write about I don't know, let's say meditation, and you only talk about how you do it without re referring any any lessons that are learned, it's like nobody will read it, I guess. Yeah, you always have to provide value to the reader, right? No matter what topic you write about. Yes. Uh, so yes. you you have also written a lot about books, right? How many books you read and how they help you. So uh, how do you fit time for reading in your schedule? Mm -hmm. I love reading. I love reading so much. And I feel like we're also on the same page here. Uh, I read every evening, so I don't take my phone to my to my bedroom and I read like for one to two hours every night before I fall asleep. And then it depends on the schedule. I'm full-time self-employed, so I can really uh, work as I as I feel like. Um, and I sometimes read in the during the lunch break, sometimes after writing. So it depends. Yeah. Right. Have you read? Yeah. Like, have you tried to read? Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, please ask. I'll, I'll ask after this. When do you read usually? Oh, I I follow the same technique as you. Uh, when I go to bed, I don't take my phone. I take my Kindle and I read a lot on the Kindle. And one of the things that help helps is that I live alone. So I have a lot of time, especially when I'm uh, having meals or you know, doing some other stuff that does not really require full time attention. So I usually have an audio book playing all the time on in my earphones. So I, I think audio books have helped a lot in my reading process. They have helped me read a lot, a lot more books than before. That's what I wanted to ask you. Like, uh, do you read? Have you tried audio books or podcasts? I listen to a lot of podcasts. I also host a podcast on my own, a weekly one in German. But I haven't. Oh, I <laughs> but I don't. I don't listen to audiobooks that much. I have like some years ago, but somehow I prefer reading. And when I'm listening, I love listening to music. So I like either podcasts while while walking somewhere or cleaning the house, but while no, so otherwise I, I I just read. Okay, I haven't really listened to many podcasts, but I love listening to audiobooks because I let the narration makes the story really come alive. It makes it more interesting. I feel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so according to you, uh, what's the anatomy of a successful medium article? A captivating headline that's almost clickbaity but delivers on its promise so and that's really tricky so the headline should first of all explain very specifically what's the benefit of reading this piece and then second of all use very concise language that's at the same time easy to understand so that's how it starts and then regarding the article itself there are so many successful posts that are so different from each other. So I don't feel like there's this perfect recipe. What works well for me is a combination of evidence-based facts blended with personal experience that's full of emotions. So whenever you write from your heart and combine it with logic, it's... And that's also... <laughs> It's also the most difficult to write because you have to find the link between what's what are the facts and how can I add my piece of life experience to it in a way that resonates with readers and also has some practical takeaways. So it's yeah, usually clustered in introduction and body and conclusion. But what happens in this process, I feel I can't give you like one exact answer because it's so variable. Right, I think that's the beauty of this platform because it's not like hard and there, there are no hard and fast rules that only this kind of content works. If you can make it interesting, yeah. any kind of structure might work, right? But recently yeah. Medium has changed the way that profiles are designed. So do you think it has like put more emphasis on the introduction and the title than com as compared to before? I haven't thought about that question. <laughs> But um, I think it's a valid point you make. Yes, because you see the, the introduction, you, it has to be in the same quality as the title. Otherwise, nobody will click it and read it. 
Mm. But it can also be an advantage because your headline doesn't need to carry everything. And you can also use your first sentences to to trigger surprise or some initial emotions. So I feel Medium wouldn't optimize its platform to make it worse. So there must be some data about it and some A-B testing before they before they rolled out this change. I can't tell you so far how it has impacted my my writing. I still write and I feel that's also a really good advice from CNM. Just focus on producing great content and the stats, it will come eventually. Just just con continue producing. I think that's very true. Like no matter what, you have to never give up. Keep writing, and eventually you'll get rewards if you be sure. consistent on the platform, right? Okay, yeah. so I'm going to ask you a very difficult question. <laughs> what are some tips for writing a good headline? And and do you think like the change in the platform has it changed the way headlines were written before, or and they are written currently? So regarding the second question, yes, I feel it has changed. I, I read some feedback from editors recently that I shouldn't use any numbers because it will be punished by the algorithm. So no numbers in the headlines anymore. And also I got a lot of feedback regarding being less clickbaity. So instead of writing, this technique will help you, writing this technique can help you or some something less um, definite. However, I feel the basics of headline writing still works the same way. So it has to be, um, it has to be very reader centric. It has to contain emotional words, power words. It has to summarize what you are trying to say and the benefit. So there's this great article by, I think it's by Benjamin Hardy about headline writing in his blog, and. There are so many angles you can take. I can't tell you the perfect recipe for this one because it depends on the post. But in general, it triggers emotions. It, it's reader centric and it promises on one specific benefit. I think these are very valuable tips that you mentioned. Uh, I know that many writers use co-schedule to analyze their headlines. Do you use it and do you think it's helpful or do you think it's accurate? To analyze headlines? Yeah. Have you tried using CoSchedule? Yeah, I use it every day. So I use it really okay. every time I write and I don't rely 100% on the numbers. So if I feel the 75 is better than the 79, I, I go for my version and for my preferred option. But I always use it to find new words that, that work better. Yes. Okay, because I I, I used to use it a lot before, but now I have stopped using it because it always gives my headlines very low score. And I felt that these headlines might work well. So what's the point in listening to what Koshidu says? But I think it loves numbers in the headline, right? But right now you mm -hmm. said that uh, currently probably Medium does not prefer numbers. So yeah, lots of interesting changes going on. Maybe we'll have to you know change the way we think of and write. Yeah, right. True. Okay. <laughs> Very true. So uh, let's talk about publications. So what is your opinion on sticking to a few publications or writing in as many publications as possible to increase your viewer viewership? In the beginning, I thought the ultimate goal is to publish with as many publications as possible. So my first three months, I focused on getting accepted to all major publications which I now did, like I'm, I'm now having all this like list to, to look um, and to select from when I publish a piece. However, I feel it's better to stick to two or three and then really deliver in that language, in that style and for the audience instead of switching all the time. Because it's also really time consuming to think about the submission guidelines again and again to um, again look up which topics might work so i feel it's better like choosing two to three big publications or the ones that resonate with you and then continuously publish with them i can so resonate with that because initially i the only aim i had was to get published in as many places as possible but currently i stick to i think three or four publications <laughs> so Right now, currently, what are your favorite publications to write in? 
not favorite but what publications do you write in most often mm -hmm. the essence is definitely number one then number two now it becomes tricky <laughs> I feel the second publication would be Age of Awareness. They are very education focused and also not the biggest one, but I feel they have exactly the topic mix I love to write about. And the third one, I guess there's no third place. So either the Mind Cafe or the Startup or Entrepreneur's Handbook. Okay, uh, for me, like currently, it's mostly Mind Cafe, PS I Love You, and uh, books are a superpower because I write a lot about books. So mm. I think this month I've only published in these three and Better Humans, as far as I remember. I also love writing for the ASINT, but they take a long time in <laughs> getting back to you. So I have to plan a lot in, in advance if I plan to publish with them. So, okay, so that again brings me to this question because some publications take a long time, right, in getting back to you. So in such cases, what do you do? Like it gets very difficult to wait, right, especially if you're new on the platform. So how do you plan your articles and how do you, what do you do in the wait time? Actually, I don't do anything with the wait time. <laughs> I just focus on producing more content and it doesn't influence my writing process. And yes, sometimes there are like 20 articles waiting to get published in my in my draft and only half of them is accepted by the by the essence. And within the same four days, like there are 10 articles, while on other times, like I have to resubmit to other publications, but I don't mind. Like the content is written most of the time. It's not time sensitive, so it doesn't matter if it's published today or next week and eventually it will all be out there. So. I don't stress about the waiting time. I don't care, actually. <laughs> I think that's very valuable advice, especially for beginners, because people tend to get impatient and they just remove the articles from a publication without re re even leaving a note for the editor and they just publish it somewhere else or self-publish it. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah. always you should always focus on writing more rather than, you know, getting it published more often. Mm -hmm. Because it happens in New York, so I have, yeah. The, the, the internet is uh, somehow a little bit lagged, so it's uh, sorry for interrupting you, but it's a very valid mm -hmm. point you make because um, if you focus too much on the feedback, it can also um, decrease the quality of your work because you're waiting for some reactions while your process of writing shouldn't be tied to external feedback. So I think it's actually a benefit of letting some time pass between being published and writing. And that way you can detach. Absolutely, that, that's very, very true. So uh, I think like that uh, you should not, you know, to focus too much on publishing schedule. You should focus more on writing schedule because it happens with me too. I have like four or five days without any new article published. And then suddenly in one day I'll have four articles published. And then that it just gets crazy. I just get flooded with notifications on a single day. And uh, I think that happens and it's all right. It doesn't really affect much in the long term. If your content is good, the rewards are going to be there, right? Right, right, yes, definitely. Yeah, so any uh, any advice or any tips you'd like to give to people who are just starting out on the platform? Mm -hmm. Patience. Patience is like the, the, I think, best word. Patience and consistency. So if you practice long enough and stick to the, the process you can enjoy without pushing it to the limit too early, but rather focusing on like two to three hours every day, every second day, or maybe write one or two times a week, um, you will eventually get better. And in the long term, also see the monetary rewards. But like with everything, if you give up too early because you feel, ah, it takes too long or it's unfair, you will never know what, what you could have um, made from that platform. So I would love to share trust and patience and consistency with all the people starting out, yes. And maybe one additional advice, really learn from the best. Like there are so many writers on this platform who give advice, but who have never done what they are saying. 
And at the same time, there are great writers like Niklas Goeke or Zinem Günel or um, who else, Megan Holstein, like they really know what they are talking about. And if you read their posts and also go back in history and read their early posts, you will see, wow, they learned. They weren't born like this, being this amazing writers. And this is really motivating. And it gave me definitely the patience to sit it out and just to keep practicing. That's so true. I mean, I, I read this advice on somebody's article. I don't remember whose, but it said that whenever you see a popular post, you should always try to reverse engineer and understand what makes it work and don't copy it, but reverse engineer it and try to create your own structure, your own in that way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very valuable advice because to succeed on a platform, you need to know how it works. You need to know what works on it. And for that, you need to spend some time. You can't just expect to write one article and earn thousands of dollars from it, right? Because I see uh, posts by many people who say that they have been writing for 10 days but not making any money and they are getting demotivated. But it always helps if you stick on and if you keep writing and not, not expect immediate results because Again, medium does not owe you anything, right? You need to be your best for you to make any valuable, like any sufficient amount of money. Right, right. Like Sinem told me in the very beginning of our coaching that I should write 100 posts before I expect any cent of earning. And she said, you really need to get better. And the writing curve, it's not like linear, but exponential. So you will like be close to zero all the time. And then suddenly, it feels suddenly, but it's actually the result of all the previous practice. Your posts will like build momentum and also reward you financially. So I feel it was like my 45th post that gave me a lot of financial rewards. And it was like a total surprise because I felt, no, I need to write this 100 posts before I can expect anything at all. And then it happened earlier and it was like a pleasant surprise. But it also gave me the stamina and the resilience to continue in the posts afterwards when not that financial reward happened again and again because I felt, okay, I, I need to practice. It's normal. Like nobody's paying a guitar player who just can play like their first song or their second song. You really need to get better at it. That's such amazing and such valuable advice. I'm I'm sure everybody would find it super useful. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I had to ask today. Thank you so much, Eva, for your time. And thank you so much for these amazing answers that you gave. I'm so happy that we decided to do this together. Thank you so much, Ananja, for, for inviting me, for having me, for asking such prolific questions and I greatly enjoy working together with you in our mastermind group which is extremely helpful and I feel it's like a lot of good energy there and a great momentum to help each other grow. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you Eva. See you again soon. See you. Bye bye. Bye. So that was Eva guys and then that's the end of this interview view thank you so much for watching this today and if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments i'll see you again soon bye